Fort Jefferson Ruins at the Dry Tortugas National Park now. And Garden Key is about 70 miles west of Key West. There you will find the massive brick fortress that is unlike anything, even other star fort, bastion forts. This is the largest all masonry structure in the entire Western Hemisphere. Now it would make sense, right? That that number of bricks would be very close to an urban area where brick production would be easy. Certainly it wouldn't be far away from the production side of bricks. That would be the logical place where you would find bricks because of transportation costs and <laughs> heat maps and 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 <laughs> insurance and all kinds of different reasons that you wouldn't have the largest masonry structure be extremely remote correct think again <laughs> now what a, a tremendous effort why because it has an estimated they don't know there are no records of this but it's an estimated 16 million bricks at Fort Jefferson. I'm going to say it again because maybe you thought I s misspoke. I even, myself, I thought it was maybe three and a half million bricks. No, it's 16 million bricks in this structure that was actually never completed. It's referred to as Fort Jefferson ruins. It's desolate. It's historic. It's haunting. It's on an island that can only be visited by boat or seaplane, and the boat trip itself takes around about, I think, four hours one way on a fast ferry. So it's so far out, so a lot of people, some people camp overnight. It's a lonely spot without fresh water. Of course, it's abandoned. It's been abandoned most of the time that we've even known about it. Not that it's in any kind of an unattractive area. It's a beautiful area with azure, tropical waters. It's an unspoiled natural island to explore within Dry Tortugas National Park. It deserves a spot for any visitor if you are one of the select very few to make it out there because it's quite a hike. Well, okay, so the answers to the question stirred up by the previous video about Fort Jefferson are thus. What good was it to build that thing and when was it built? Well, I think it was built on a foundation of a star fort that existed in the times that all of the other star forts, most of the others existed. And the reason for the original existence of the star forts probably had something to do with the location and it is also like all the other ones surrounding water and that could be for power production and I found it interesting that it has limited power even to today they say and the location of it also does not provide ample fresh water they could only collect it from rainwater in the cisterns and food production other than fish maybe some birds you're not going to do much agriculture there to understand how remote this is it is west of Key West now I personally drove I attempted to drive from Miami to Key West and back in a day and I didn't make it <laughs> I made it because I wanted to hang out on one of the keys for the afternoon and then drive home I didn't care how late I got back but still, I only, by the time I got to Isla Mirada, which is about halfway, I was done. I was just done. It's like, okay, I'm going to hang out for an hour or two, and then it's like four hours drive back, something like that. So I 
have an appreciation for how far Key West is, and that's driving a car on a highway, which they didn't have. And so sailing, it's a tiny island, you know, out there. That's Key West. This, the Dry Tortugas, is many, many miles west, 70 or 80 miles west of Key West. Literally just about in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Why would you want something there? Well, that's what we need to examine. They say it was a strategic military location. When they talk about these star forts in other presentations, they say that the star forts were strategic locations because they protected a port or a harbor or they're on a river and protected from invasions from the river or protected the river crossing or protected a bridge or protected a town or village or city, whatever. This is out in the middle, smack dab in the middle of nowhere. And now the narrative changes a little bit on this. They say it is out there because it is a safe harbor. In other words, imagine... Imagine you're in a ship and you are sailing along and you look back and it's the dread pirate Roberts and he's gaining on you. He's gaining on you. Supposedly, you could sail all the way. You could navigate yourself to this tiny little key you could sail all the way there and uh, get get your ass saved by those cannons because the Dread Pirate Roberts, he's gaining on you, gaining on you, gaining on you. And you're sailing and, you, and there is Tortuga. Tortuga. And, and you're okay. You're okay because the Dread Pirate Roberts knows about those cannons that weren't installed yet until 1873 but nonetheless shakes his fist and says foiled foiled by Fort Jefferson on the dry Tortuga now one of the interesting things about the narrative in this case of Fort Jefferson that's a little different from the rest of the forts narratives the star forts, bastion forts is the fact that in the official narrative it is not always there but in some of the presentations they mention the fact that Fort Jefferson was a prison for a time like many of these ancient structures these behemoth massive nearly impossible structures like Fort Jefferson, with 16 million bricks estimated, they don't even know. They say it was a prison. Now, it's part of a total bullshit Civil War narrative where imprisoned there was the man who assisted John Wilkes Booth by setting his broken leg, and that that doctor was a traitor later and they sent him down to Fort Jefferson all the way 80 miles depends on who's counting but it's 70 to 80 miles west west of Key West (laughs) almost smack dab in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico now were their prisons not secure my gosh the logistics of getting prisoners out there would be quite a feat and because even just having the prison guard staff there if you look listen to them talk about the refurbishing the men working on it for the the bricks that they talk about it like they're refurbishing the whole thing they're, they're talking about a wall four years uh, they're there for for a period of weeks and weeks and then they fly home for a week 
because they have a life. They don't live in this remote, deserted island. They start to go crazy out there. So that's how it is now, and that they could only do it, you know, four years, and they refurbish one section of it, just tuck pointing the the brickwork. <laughs> they transporting the materials there. They they complain and bitch about it. It's a pain in the ass. So they do that, and then they, but no, back then they had it fully staffed to hold prisoners there. If you had a riot, you can't get assistance. It doesn't make sense that it would be a prison. It's not built really like a prison. I can see where the can the supposed chambers where the cannons would be held, which is bullcrap. Those were not uh, holding cannons. I don't think that would make sense to have that many cannons and how it's tucked in those corners and, and that type of thing. So, and those iron shutters are a joke. Never once used, yet it's an important military technology because opening and closing the shutters was too much for the the men who were busy lifting 450 pound solid iron cannon balls. These 15 inch diameter, 15 inch, that's almost... I, that's over a foot that's <laughs> what is it about 30 centimeters diameter solid iron ball you'll never you'll never in your life all across the world I don't think any of us will ever see a single demonstration of one of these 450 pounds solid round iron cannonballs ever be shot out of a cannon I don't mean a breech loading gun I'm talking about a cannon that is front loaded it has so many bricks you would think they wouldn't it, it seems as if they had so many bricks that they just went crazy with extra bricks the thickness of the walls the pathways are brick when it could just be Sand, I mean, it, it's no longer in use as a military facility if it ever really was exactly that, but I think it really was, though it didn't start out that way. There was this beautiful structure on it originally uh, that was torn down along with the lighthouse, the original lighthouse on Garden Key, a 70 foot, you guessed it, brick lighthouse there, and the actual date that it was built it varies if you're looking at it as a fort like an american fort they they it's one of these things they kept refurbishing and they repurposed it as a prison at one time which i think explains a lot now originally though i don't think it was i think the structure was there i think that they put a veneer on the bricks and even these Totten shutters, the iron shutters that are destroying the fascia, the, the, the facade, the outer layer of bricks, that, those shutters probably weren't original to the structure. It doesn't make sense. It's the third largest fort in the United States, but it is the only one that is all masonry. It doesn't make sense that you would have it be that, uh, that far out. And it doesn't make sense that you would be, it would be used for anything. And I'll tell you why. Even though the harbor is actually pretty good for taking in a few ships, not very many, it's very small, 15 acres as the structure itself, it could be a, a safe place for a while, but it wouldn't be hard to lay siege upon it. Even the cannons could reach supposedly three to five miles out if they ever used them, which they didn't, but they never <laughs> probably would have. What was the point of this thing, and, and whose idea was it to to have that many handmade bricks put out there? And Now, these types of bricks have to be kind of special. They're not the kind that need to withstand freezing temperatures, so that is a good head start. However, you're in this salt water environment, and I haven't seen a whole lot of bricks 
in salt water, I usually see concrete and stone uh, structures around salt water. And the reason is the mortar, I think. And so I don't know if they would have had to use fresh water for the mortar or if salt water could be used. There are problems with leaching salts. Uh, it, you have to have the right saline. And maybe they found a way around that. I don't know. Obviously, somehow it works out. But since they don't know how many bricks were even used in the project, I would think being a military project from the beginning, as they say, that number would be readily available. 16 acres is uh, six and a half hectares. That's not a lot of uh, area. And I was thinking about, well, what, what, what kind of a prison would it be? Because that, <laughs> that's what the, they, they originally made it as a, a safe harbor, but it was never really used for that. Even according to the official narrative, U.S. Navy Commodore David Porter inspected the dry, now they're called the Dry Tortugas Islands. He was on the lookout for a site for a naval station would help suppress piracy, Mihartes, in the Caribbean. Unimpressed with what he saw, he notified the Secretary of the Navy that the Dry Tortugas were unfit for any kind of naval establishment. He reported that, that they consist of a small small sand islands a little bit above the surface of the ocean, having no fresh water and scarcely enough land to place a fortification, and in any case are probably not solid enough to bear one. Well, structurally they are, but I think the most significant thing is the lack of fresh water. If you think about the remoteness of that place and the fact that they didn't have radio communications, you could get yourself in a whole lot of trouble really fast, especially having a prison there. What's your lifeline? Look, you have no power. There's no real uh, <laughs> food supply, water supply other than the rain. The food supply has to be brought in like everything else with great expense, great travail, great distances. I bet you there aren't many records of those travels. And with all those difficulties, what is even the point? Were, were the prisons that were not so remote, would they not be, <laughs> would they not be suitable? Well, the answer is, I think, that the purpose of these, this prison was, it was the privation of it, because it wasn't a prison. There's, it's ridiculous to think that it was a prison. You wouldn't have that be your, a, a prison. You, you can't support it. The, the logistics of everything are just absolutely off the wall ridiculous. Get out of here. It wasn't a prison. It was an execution center if it was anything. But more likely, it was just a ruse. It was just a place that they would say that they sent people if they did away with them or if they were fake people that took on a new identity. They didn't keep people there. There's no way. If if they really kept a, a prison population there, they would the the prisoners would have very easily uh, overtaken the guards. One of the things they could do is just by attrition. If if their lives are so miserable, they could just spoil the water supply and things like that. They they they're so vulnerable. Would you want to be a prison guard on an island that is by a steamship or sailing ship? Uh, 70 miles from from the from the nearest harbor for support no way no way and and getting all those bricks there and those cannons the 25 ton 15 inch rodman cannons those also were for show it the the to make sense of it you have to think about the things that they do today and how much of the news is fake because they have all kinds of stories about, I found, with uh, Dr. Samuel Mudd. My name is Mudd. You know, the, he, the, 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 there are kind of ridiculous stories about him being a prisoner there. And there is another one that gets sent up to the cabin. I don't think that they kept prisoners there. And, and even in the official narrative, they say 
that it was a military prison and unlike Leavenworth, this was something where the stories coming out of it would go into the news. And when you have stories from famous people in prison going into the news, I think it quite dubious. And it was almost comical about the food and them eating spoiled hard tack and, and these types of stories and artifacts coming from it. Just like the cannons were never fired. It just seems like a big phony baloney show. So what was the structure then really? Well, I think it was repurposed just like they have said officially it is, but it was always repurposed. I think it being a prison was repurposed. I think it being a coastal fortification to support the United States Navy, that itself may also have been a repurposing of what was already there. When they said that they had to switch the bricks from the ones coming from Pensacola to the ones from Maine, I think that was a story to cover the fact that they were supplying it with bricks because the original bricks weren't going to be produced. They couldn't match it up the same. And why were they even building it up more? Well, just like today, having it being a park and how they're mounting those ridiculous cannons from off the ground, they're just putting a nice face on what they inherited. Just like today, it was the same thing back then. It was already there. And it may be that they themselves knew not where it came from. I wouldn't be surprised if Ponce de Leon or Ponce de Leon <laughs> himself was, if he was even a real person who actually went there and saw anything, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't already find that there was something there. And if it, even if it was built out of the bricks, where did the bricks come from? Probably Key West. Probably from tearing down the types of buildings that were found in in Havana, Cuba, and other places. These glorious old world structures, some of them still remain. I think most of the bricks from this era were not handmade, as they say. I think that they were reclaimed bricks from the demolition and deconstruction of the old world structures that were a little too grandiose to fit the narrative of what was being sold to the settlers and pioneers repopulating the area after the reset. That's what I think. And I think I covered most of the questions that were there. I will do another video about the cannons. And overall, just using common sense, logistics-wise, Whatever it is, however it was built, whenever it was built, I've given you my theories, but clearly I think I'm on the right side of common sense to say that it wasn't constructed out of those 16 est estimated 16 million bricks that they didn't actually know how many, even though it's military accounting and record keeping, they didn't know how many. and. They, did, they are not sure where they came from. They think a couple different places. And uh, yeah, it, it was never finished and it was never used. But it's this really important technology there with the cannon shutters and et cetera, et cetera. I, I'm not buying it. Looking at it, the amount of bricks used, it does suggest perhaps they employed the, they worked the prisoners and had them building with the bricks just to occupy their minds to keep them from going crazy. But as forced labor, they even admitted civilians convicted by the military tribunals. So you want to know what a reset is like. You have civilians going under military tribunal, that's martial law, being convicted of not following protocols and procedures laid out, whatever those were. And in the official narrative, they do talk about disease and, and these types of things where certain people were considered bad because they carried the disease into the prison. And it explains wiping out the prison population, where if that was used that way, it was just a, a, a kill center. You 
it's out in the, the remotest area they would get information and just wipe people out perhaps but then that's a little too gruesome i think i'm not so cynical about things like that but when you start getting into privation which the government seems to be really into in a lot of ways with privation it does worry me that uh, the the correlation between abuse and privation when you're talking about having someplace so remote with fortifications and barricades nobody could get in there and see what is happening and there seems to be they had some cisterns there but they also had something that looked like a cremation oven and without much fresh water and without uh, an easy uh, there's no agriculture there's no supply lines to, so to speak there's really uh having a large prison population there just simply doesn't make sense they would be not very alive very long i think especially if there was any trouble at all so uh could it have been one of one of these nightmarish prison type places well frankly i don't think it really was i think it's it may have been that somewhat for a while but originally i think it looks so much like these other star forts it's they had to really come up with a story for this one because the ocean levels rose these structures were already there they tore down as many as they could as they went along but some of them like this were so remote tearing it down would have been too difficult just like getting the cannons out of there they couldn't lower them even with modern equipment off the they called it the terra plane because it's an earthen plane on the roof of the structure now there's a large building i have a picture of it with i think maybe the original or the, they rebuilt the lighthouse three times but it's one, the, either the first lighthouse or the second uh beautiful structure that they tore down <laughs> they just couldn't get to it in time before the foot before photography and so garden key the fortress on there it didn't make sense they had to they they probably partially tore it down but they couldn't completely and so they had to say that they had built it and hadn't finished and that it was an unfinished structure it was simply just the fact was they they couldn't tear it down fast enough before people would get there with uh with photography so that i think is the explanation of and it could be that they didn't even know where it came from you know these reset things go for generations there may be a select few who would know but most people wouldn't that so it may be true about what the navy captain said although i don't think it was an empty an an empty key i just really don't believe that they brought in that many bricks just hearing the the workers complain about the logistics of bringing in those bricks at six 16 million bricks i mean okay you could load them on a boat but you'd need modern equipment it would be a tremendous expense and they admitted that it was a tremendous expense three and a half million dollars is a lot of money in 1860 or 18 uh, what year was it it was 1857 something like that uh, the first lighthouse was started in 1824 and first lit in 1826. And construction began on Fort Jefferson in 1846 and continued until 1861, but the fort was never completed, they said. And in 1858, they built another lighthouse, Dry Tortugas Lighthouse, built on a nearby island. And so they moved the first order for now lens from garden key and then the garden key lighthouse received a fourth order for now lens and became the harbor light for fort jefferson in 1877 the brick tower was raised r-a-z-e-d taken down torn down and replaced with a boiler plate iron tower on top of a stairwell in the fort which doesn't make sense to me iron in that salt air but they had a different way of doing the iron and you you might see that in the cannons video with the coating. It was only the sand that corroded it. The salt water and air didn't corrode the cannons. Some kind of special coating they had on the iron. But anyway, 
they had uh, uh, it, it's so remote that the the lighthouse is automated and it's hardly staffed they had this glorious huge magnificent building there and uh, I didn't see the story on what happened to that but I don't think that's there now it's just uh, uh, it's a curiosity for people to visit it's not strategic now it wasn't strategic in the past it was never really a strategic location for a military fort what i observed with these forts actually reading the actual history of supposed conflicts at least close to home uh, where i am i found some reports about the use of cannons and forts around Niagara, Fort Niagara, and is basically whoever occupied the fort was at a disadvantage and lost to the opposing side. <laughs> and in this case, the Union occupied it. They didn't lose. Of course, the Confederacy never went near that place. Why would they? Why would anybody? And as far as it being a safe harbor, I don't know because if you retreated to it they could lay you under siege maybe you would be protected but if I were <laughs> if I were attacking I wouldn't be as afraid of the cannons as they say people were <laughs> those cannons were so ridiculous I think operating the cannon would be the scariest thing in the world to, to do rather than be on the on the receiving end of it because the accuracy of a round ball doesn't seem like something that would be all that all that worrisome I don't know look it they even say it wasn't used for that they they say it was a prison they don't talk about the prison population clearly I think it was if anything mostly a ruse a cover for some temporary activities but I think the vast majority of everything that you read about it is accounting for what it must be now it's just inherited it's from an, an old world civil civilization of which we know not that much about yet but it was they were here long ago you think bricks you think are new world but no bricks go all the way back if you look at the oldest structures Athens Rome you go underneath those facades you think are monolithic marble or granite and they have many times brick underneath it's shocking the amount of brick that there really is I think over a trillion bricks in the world and that's my story that I am developing with research thank you for listening and coming along for the ride this ends the tour of fort jefferson in the dry tortugas on garden key in the florida area of north america the largest masonry structure in the western hemisphere also the most remote isolated on barely 16 acres of sandy <laughs> sandy ground some three to four feet above sea level at high tide the largest built n never finished never really used structure it's ridiculous it's over engineering over construction to the extreme whoever conceived of the idea and carried it out if it was according to the narrative that they give us that person they should have treated they should he should have been the first one put in that prison for coming up with that nonsense so <laughs> all right well we can laugh about it now i'm uap thank you for coming along if you want to support the channel be sure to Support me on Patreon or look at cash.me or go to uapchannel.net and you can buy my music. And there's almost, there's really, I get almost, I think it's just a small fee of a few cents for the transactions. You can use PayPal there 
just buy my music for the download and whatever you do with that it's up to you you can pay what you will and that that would help me out a lot and if you don't do that that's fine you can like share be sure that you are subscribed and resubscribed and uh, save my videos and playlists as well this is another way to help so thanks for coming along and i'll catch you next time bye bye